Okay, I'll be the first to admit that a lot of times I get clouded by nostalgia. A lot of the things that I like, I associate the memories that I had with them with that particular game or toy or, or whatever. That can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. Sometimes it clouds your judgment. You see things through rose-colored glasses. So I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite games that I really, really like that I, I didn't grow up with. So there's no nostalgia to them. And I'm gonna, uh, and I'm gonna try to avoid And I'm going to try to avoid talking about games that I've talked about on other lists. Oh, it's Friday night. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. I could sit here and pick my nose while I watch a brand new video. Oh, oh. Time by Friday. Time by Friday tonight. My very first memory of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out was at my dad's friend's house. We had gone over and he had just gotten an NES. So he was playing Mario and he was playing Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. And I, at this point, I didn't have one. I hadn't played it at all. And I just remember seeing Mike Tyson's Punch-Out and thinking, oh wow, this is a lot more detailed and awesome than in television boxing. And, and while it is, it's a lot more fun as well. However, I was a lot more interested in the Super Mario Brothers game. I remember even telling the kid, hey, can we play Mario Brothers? Let's let's take out this boxing game. And while it's cool, let's play Super Mario Brothers. You know, he insisted on playing Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. So I watched him play. I didn't really play it that much. Uh, but I've never had any real interest in going and renting it once I got my NES or getting the game or anything like that. And I never, I, I never played it. I never played it at all. But as an adult collector, it was one of the, you know, it's one of the more common ones you see out there. So I got in and I started playing it and I was like, wow, this, this was really good. Uh, it's really, really timing based. You got to learn the patterns for all these different boxers and you got, you got to have quick reflexes and you got to know the strategy behind them. And I'll fully admit, I'm not very good at the game. However, I do really enjoy it and I think it's fun. So every once in a while, I'll pop it in and I'll play it and I'll have a great time up until King Hippo. And <laughs> when I start getting my, my ass handed to me. <laughs> Number four on my list is uh, Rondo of Blood. Now, I didn't have a Turbo Graphics growing up. Uh, the only time I ever saw anything Turbo Graphics related was in Game Pro Magazine. Once I got back into gaming after taking a break in somewhere in around the mid late 90s, I was like, I want to play a Castlevania game. So I, I, I remember working at Blockbuster and, and being like, I'm going to rent these Castlevania games on N64 and they were awful absolutely awful. I was like, man, see, this is why I, this is why I got out of gaming because I, everything's going to 3D and it looks like you're, you're playing games in mud on the N64. And I was like, oh man, whatever, man. I was missing out on a lot of stuff. Uh, there were several side scrolling, really good games that I missed. One being on the Genesis, but this is another one. The sound and graphics are freaking amazing in this game. And the fact that it it's while it's linear, there are branching paths. It's just such a brilliant game, and it really puts you in that Castlevania sort of Halloween scary mood. And I usually play it around October every year, and sometimes other months as well. Although I haven't played it in a while, but it's it's absolutely brilliant, and it, it's right up there with Castlevania Four, in my opinion. Next up, we have Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. Didn't didn't play it as a kid. Didn't play it. Didn't even really care to play it. Look, when this game came out, I was really kind of getting my feel for video games at that time. I was in high school. I really wasn't going to my grandparents' house and playing games as much anymore. I just didn't have any desire to 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 play it, to own it, to rent it, or or anything like that. Now the game itself is right up my alley. It should be a game that I absolutely love and a classic on this. It's cl absolutely a classic on the series. I just have no nostalgic attachment to it. And I know a lot of you do. A lot of you probably, this is gonna be one of your favorite games and you have so much nostalgia and great memories attached to it, how fun it was when you're playing that as a kid. And, and I kind of envy that in a while, but at that time I was just growing up. But as a collector, as I got older, I was like, wow, I gotta play that. And so uh, it was one of the first Super Nintendo games that I actually played when I got a big lot and that was in it. 
And I absolutely fell in love with the game. I was like, wow, this, I missed out on this. It doesn't get boring, you know, it doesn't get repetitive and it's just all around fun. It's an absolute classic on the series and I absolutely acknowledge that. I just wish I had some fond memories to go along with it and I don't, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Next up is pretty much everything I literally said on this last one, on this one as well, and a lot of you are gonna... Yeah, it's Super Metroid. I don't like maze games, I, I just don't. I don't like trying to figure out where to go, and you have to do that in these types of games. And so I, I it was just everything was working against it to where I, I, I missed out on it. But when I got this game as, as a collector in the last 15 years or whatever, uh, I was like, Wow, I under, I completely understood why this game is, for a lot of people, their favorite game of all time. Sure, you're in a maze and you're trying to figure out where to go, but it doesn't get tedious. You enjoy exploring. You enjoy trying to figure out where everything is. And I was immediately sucked into that world whenever I put the game in. Everything about it is just so absolutely amazing. I, I remember I went through it for and for about a week and I, I beat it and it was I, I think one of the very first games that I had beat uh, when I started collecting games again uh, that I had never played back in, in the day. Uh, so that tells you something right then and there. I was willing to invest some of my time uh, to, to dedicate it to this one game when I had been in, got this influx of so many different games early on in collecting. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to put this game in and I'm going to play it and I'm going to complete it. And I, I'm glad I did because I, I know why you guys love it or a lot of you guys love it. And, and it just kind of sucks that I missed out on it. But man, is, is, is it just an absolute masterpiece? I'm not sure if I even understand this one myself, but it is what it is. It's the it's the legend of Zelda. I just know it was not something that I was interested in. I was too busy with the Marios, the side scrollers, the top down view. Uh, you know, I, I know I'd seen it in Nintendo Power, but actually sitting in front of a TV screen and and playing it, I I, I may have. I just don't remember. And you know, so obviously, uh, I have absolutely zero nostalgic attachment to this game. And uh, just like a couple of the other games I've mentioned on this list, 100% somebody who's watching this video right now is like, that's my favorite game of all time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can understand why. It's an absolute classic. I don't have to sit here and tell you that The Legend of Zelda on the NES is an absolute classic game. You know that, it's a given. That's like, like the sun comes up, grass is green, sky is, well, sky is different colors, but you, you catch my, my drift here. Legend of Zelda is absolutely one of the best games of all time, and I missed out on it. 100% missed out on it. I would have felt, fallen in love with this game if I'd played it back in the day. I would have, and it, it wouldn't be on this list. It would be on my top 20 list of NES games of all time. It would be on that list, not this list. Uh, and I would have a lot of absolute just passion for this particular game, but I don't. You know, a lot of this stuff that I was, I was talking about at the beginning, a lot of this stuff that we play, it's like we, it means more to us because we have this connection, these memories associated with it. You know, I have this connection with Super Mario Brothers because I was plopped down onto the ground in front of the television set, this big console television set with my grandfather right there, and we were sitting there playing Super Mario Brothers. And it means more to me because of that, because of that, that, that attachment. Of, of what you have up here to it and I just don't have that with the Legend of Zelda obviously uh, but I can acknowledge the fact that it's an amazing game and it is this was one of the first retro games I got when I started collecting again and I didn't even play the thing on an actual NES uh, at that time I had just gotten like this, this yo I think it was a YOLO not YOLO Yobo or, or something console NES clone and I was for a few weeks I that's what I was playing uh, my retro games that I had just been getting on uh, until I got an actual NES system so I remember it was a top loader so you put that I, that was one of the first games I played and I was in my little corner in my living room when I lived in my little small apartment and I was sitting there playing Zelda uh, for the first time maybe for the first time like I said, I don't remember, but it was the first time I'd ever played it significantly and really started to get into it. 
And unfortunately, I kind of had my experience crapped on just a bit because uh, the battery uh, in the game was shot. So I would spent a couple hours playing Legend of Zelda. And then the next day when I, I fired it on, my save wasn't there anymore. And uh, I was like, what? What, what? At first I was like, why have you saved the game if it doesn't stay? And I realized, oh, damn, batteries. So you got to replace those. I, that was the first time I actually learned how to replace a battery on an NES game. As you know, uh, some of you know, I ended up absolutely having a connection with the Link, Link to the Legend of Zelda Link to the Past uh, when it, it eventually. And it really kind of makes you think. It's like, why do we like the games we like because of the nostalgia or do we just really, really like them? Uh, and so that's to me was is what retro gaming is all about. You have your percentage that's just attached to your childhood and you have that percentage that's just you like it because it's fun. And I think it's that cool little mix between it that, that makes retro gaming so amazing. So thank you for watching.